in in reading items uh, thesis seven, Michael, one of the things that has stood out for me is the great cost that reproduction brings to us energetically. And mm. uh, in earlier conversations that you and I have had, you've told me that uh, some people understanding this have actually had themselves castrated. And I wonder <laughs> if you could expand on, on those conversations right. and the meaning yeah. of the cost right. of right. reproduction. Okay, I'm, I'm going to get there, but I won't start there. <clears throat> so the point of Thesis 7 is that biology is very complicated, not in ways that we can't figure out, in ways, in fact, that we can figure out. But unfortunately, uh, most of the last two centuries of biology, from 1800 to 2000, have featured biologists who've done actually pretty simple and crude things in the hope that they would thereby successfully address major scientific problems in biology. Now, my concern in, in uh, thesis number seven is firstly to argue that, you know, a lot of the time what natural selection is doing is shaping the frequencies and the functions of, of genes with very minor effects. So what I'm trying to do here is convey to the reader and the listener is some sense of the subtlety of biology. And the idea that normally things like large effect mutations, the you know, whack you over the head, genetically uh, mutations, usually will not be very revealing of uh, how organisms work, and in particular how aging works. But what I've supplied here is actually the best argument against that point of view, against that thesis. And the best argument that I've ever found against this point of view is when you genetically or uh, mechanically castrate an animal. The word castration actually in biology refers to the destruction of the gonads, the reproductive organs of either male or female. So it's not just the you know, testicle shriveling scare word that it is commonly thought to be. It includes hysterectomy. So hysterectomy, biologically speaking, is castration uh, to a biologist. Now, this is one of the few cases where a large effect produced either genetically or surgically does have uh, scientific significance in terms of its interpretation. If you castrate an animal, you will often, but not always, produce an increase in its lifespan. That's called uh, the cost of reproduction. And in a sense, you invert it and you say the benefit of not reproducing. Now, does this mean that if you uh, do anything to reduce your reproduction, you will live longer, regardless of who you are, regardless of your circumstances? Unfortunately, the answer is no. Um, in particular, to take the most extreme case, uh, there's no evidence in, in the medical literature that I'm aware of that women who undergo hysterectomies live longer than those who do not. There's a problem of cases and controls here, a lot of detail. But we can escape from those problems simply by saying that the opposite uh, or parallel is not true of men. In cases where a significant number of men have been castrated and kept in similar conditions, uh, castration does appear to increase the lifespan of men. The best, even if grisly and horrifying to contemplate, data on this point come from the institutions in the United States in the 20th century, especially the uh, middle third of the 20th century, where thanks to your proverbially enlightened state legislation, um, that was a joke, um, <clears throat> for those who live in the United States will understand what I'm saying, uh, those proverbially enlightened state legislators decreed that mentally defective individuals were to be confined in institutions and in some cases castrated, in other cases not castrated. And when people compared the longevity of the castrated with the uncastrated, institutionalized male mental defectives in the United States from this period of time, they found the castrated ones lived longer. Now, as a personal note, when I talk about this kind of data in public seminars, I have had the experience of castrated men coming up to me and saying, 
in a somewhat confessional way, but uh, not entirely embarrassed. They've told me that they were themselves castrated. Um, in the cases where they explained why, they will usually say it was because of uh, cancer. So testicular cancer is a common reason now for male castration. And um, in some cases, these are men in their 90s who are very proud of their survival in their 90s. And they're often very pleased that I told them this uh, little anecdote about the castration of American men in institutions. So there are cases where the thesis of uh, uh, the thesis number seven is in fact in entirely uh, not correct, that you don't need in some cases to be overly fussed about the details. Certain kinds of brutal experimentation do in fact work and do disclose important features of the biology which underlie chronic health and disease. 